Hello friends, you are watching a Rudire Plus, the professional CAD CAM solution provider. Let's get started. Hello viewers. We know that heat pipes are widely used in many industrial applications. They enable the transfer of high heat fluxes with low temperature gradients by using the latent heat of vaporization of your working fluid. At present in electronic industry, especially for electronic cooling, all today's laptops where the a process is producing huge amount of heat to reduce the heat at a higher rate we can utilize this heat pipes also today we will use one specific application of heat pipe the exhaust gas of any vehicle can be utilized at a lower temperature with the use of heat pipe so this is the application we are considering heat pipes inside this one for better understanding of this model let us cut this model from front plane You can see here we are having a lot of heat pipes. This is the evaporative section of the heat pipe. This is the adiabatic section and this one is the condenser part of the heat pipe. So from this one we will enter the exhaust gas of the vehicle. It will pass through this end and from this end we will be providing cold air. By the application of heat pipe, heat will be transferred very rapidly from this part to that part. That means a huge amount of heat will be transferred from here to here at a higher rate and again that heat will be reduced by application of cold air from this side. This application can be utilized any vehicle where the exhaust gas is in the range of 750 to 350 degrees centigrade. That can be utilized as per our requirement. The temperature of the exhaust gas can be controlled with the mass flow rate of air from this end. Okay. So let us start this analysis. First of all, we have to initiate the flow simulation environment with the wizard. And we are keeping the name of the project as default project 4. Next to that, you have to select the unit system. We are selecting the default system as SI unit and pressure will consider as bar. And temperature will be considered as degree Celsius as usual. Next to that, we have to select that analysis type. It will be definitely internal analysis and heat conduction in solids will be there. And definitely gravity will be involved. As hot air has a tendency to go up, so we'll consider gravity. And the direction of gravity will be Y. That is indicated by this direction. So along Y it will be minus 9.81 meter per second square and along z it will be 0 meter per second square next to that you have to select that liquid and gases liquid will be definitely water because for copper and water we are having best combination of heat pipe excluding water we can have some other liquids also but copper and water will provide a better results and the exhaust gas will be Consistium, carbon dioxide, water vapor, etc. But we will consider only here. Next to that, default material will be alloy steels and copper will be considered for the heat pipes. Initially, we are considering alloys as the default material. It will be steel, stainless steel 321 as the default material, and copper will be provided during applications of boundary conditions. And we are considering default out of work thermal condition and roughness. Next to that, the pressure will be 1.0135 bar and temperature will be 20 degrees centigrade. Similarly, solid parameters also will be 20 degrees centigrade. Let us finish this. This is the computational domain. Now we can hide this part. Next to that, you have to select that fluid subdomains because we are having three different types of fluids. From here, we will be providing high temperature air at a specific rate, and from this one, also we will provide cold air at a specific rate. And inside these heat pipes, we will be providing water at a low pressure of 0.4 bar. So, let us select that computational domain, and for seeing the 
dynamics of flow particles we can make this model complete to transparent let us make the model transparent now the model is transparent first of all you have to apply hot air from the down part from here fluid subdomains insert fluid subdomain it will be hot air at a temperature of 610 degree centigrade let us apply temperature to be 610 degree centigrade the location will be this one select select other this is number 3 so this is the fluid subdomain of hot air at 610 degree centigrade green check next to that we have to provide fluid subdomain for cold air we can rotate this model a little bit for providing that better selection of this location fluid subdomains insert fluid subdomain it will be again air at a temperature of 10 degrees centigrade select select other it will be lead number two so this is the fluid subdomain for cold air at 10 degrees centigrade Grand check next to that we have to provide fluid subdomain for heat pipes for better selection we can hide this model let us make the model hidden and we can apply fluid subdomain for these pipes fluid subdomains insert fluid subdomain and it will be definitely water let us select the pipes select select other it will be face of extrude boss base 6 selected let us select all the surfaces one by one select other so fluid subdomain for heat pipes have been selected green check let us make the model visible again the model is visible now next to that we will provide solid materials insert solid materials it will be stainless steel for the outer parts let us select the material as stainless steel 321 for this outer part selected can check next to that we will provide material for this heat pipes again solid materials insert solid material predefined metals it will be copper for the pipes so let us select the pipes from the geometry itself selected all the pipes have been selected and the material for this pipe will be copper green check next to that you have to select that heat pipes for better selection we can make the outer parts as hidden let us make the outer part as hidden now we can select heat pipes better way you have to select heat pipes from conditions heat pipes selected now first we have to select all the components of heat pipes so we can select it from the geometry so the heat pipes have been selected next part we have to select that evaporative part of the heat pipes so we can select one by one The evaporative parts have been selected. Next part you have to select that condensation zone, that means condenser part. 
the top part is the condenser part and mid part is the anabatic zone selected next to that you have to select that effective thermal resistance this is a parameter that is dependent on experimental data so its value will be in the range of 0.56 this value is equal to actually the temperature difference in between condenser and evaporative part divided by the wattage input wattage it is an experimental data great check Next to that, we have to apply boundary conditions. So, for applying boundary conditions, we can select the model again. So, the hidden part should be made visible. This is the complete model. Now, we have to apply boundary conditions. For applying boundary conditions, we can rotate the model a little bit. Boundary conditions, insert boundary condition, mass flow rate we are considering 1 kg per second, from the lower part, select, select other, we select number 3, select it, and let us see the thermodynamic parameters, it will be 610 degrees centigrade, great check. Next to that, from other side we have to provide cold air at a temperature of 10 degrees centigrade only. So let us rotate this model. Boundary conditions, insert boundary condition. Again, mass flow rate in this case will be, we can vary the mass flow rate. Let us take the mass flow rate 1 kg per second. In parametric study, we will vary this range to have desired amount of cooling. Okay, so let us select this range from here. Select select other, it will be lead number two. And let us see the thermodynamic parameters, it will be 10 degrees centigrade. We will check two more boundary conditions are needed that means atmospheric pressure at the exit locations. So, boundary conditions, insert boundary conditions, it will be atmospheric pressure at the exit locations. Let us select the two exit locations. Select, select other, it will be lead number one. Then check, done. Now, another boundary condition that will be the last one that means atmospheric pressure at the exit location to be selected. Boundary conditions, insert boundary conditions, select, select other, it will be lead number 4 and it will be atmospheric pressure at the exit location, you can check. So all the boundary conditions have been applied, next to that you have to select some goals, we are planning to have all the goals to be a surface goals and our main aim is to have the temperature at the exit surfaces by the same time we want to see the temperature at the different faces of heat pipes so goals insert surface goals you want to see average temperature of fluid at the exit surfaces select select other it's lead number 4 Check. Now another goal is needed that means from the exit of the down part to be selected again. Goals. Insert surface goals. It will be average temperature of fluid at the 
exit of hot end select select other use lead number one selected green check we can rename these goals as first goal will be temperature at the cold exit the second one will be temperature at hot exit by the same time you want to have temperature at different surfaces of these heat pipes for better selection you can make the outer parts of the model to be hidden model is hidden right now now we have to select the temperature at the different surfaces of heat pipes goals insert surface goals and it will be average temperature fluid select select other is face of extrude boss base 6 we can select all the surfaces of the evaporating part select other face of extrude boss base again let us select all the surfaces one by one select other we are making this part as a single one we want to take the average temperature of evaporating part we are not taking these parts separately we are considering all the evaporative parts as a single goal so it will be a single goal only so we are not considering this one as a separate goal we are considering the average temperature of fluid inside the evaporative part green check next one we have to select the average temperature at the adiabatic section so we can select goals, insert surface goals, again it will be average temperature of fluid at the anaerobic section, select, select other, select it, like this we can select all the surfaces, select it, and go and check, we are considering this one as a single goal, now finally you have to select the temperature at the Condenser part goals insert surface goals. It will be average temperature of fluid at the condenser surface. Let us select the condenser surface one by one. Select select other. So all the goals have been selected. Now we can rename these goals as first one will be average temperature at the evaporative surface. Next one will be average temperature at the adiabatic section and the last one will be average temperature at the condenser section. All the goals have been selected. Now we can go for meshing. Before that I can see the model as a complete view. Let us make the model as a complete view. This is the complete model. And finally we have to select the machine to have better results we can go for higher machine better quality machine global mesh edit definition we want to see the manual mesh let us see the refinement level display refinement level it is defined up to one level let us refine this one up to three level done go and check Now we can run this. Let us run this with new calculations. We have already simulated this one and you can see the results from project 1 with same data. Let us load the results and let us see it. Result is loaded. First of all, we want to see the cut plots in the form of temperature of fluid from front plane for this dynamic subflow particles let us make the copper pipes also transparent now the copper pipes are also transparent we can view the dynamic subflow particles in a better way first of all we want to see the cut plots insert cut plots and that one we want to view from front plane it will be temperature of fluid. Great check. 
So let us view this one from front end. So we can see here, this is the high temperature zone. And from here we are providing hot air at 610 degrees centigrade. And from this one we are providing cold air at 10 degrees centigrade. Let us see this one in the form of an animation. Let's play. In the color chain, you can see the heat pipes are having color in the range of 260 to 344 degrees centigrade. And in different regions, we are having different temperatures of heat pipes. That one we can view from gold plots. Next to that, we will see pressure distribution also. Let us clear and hide. We will see pressure distribution from front plane. And in definition, we will see instead of Temperature of fluid, we want to see pressure distribution throughout this front plane. Go ahead and check. You can see the downward pressure is very high, and top part pressure is little bit less compared to the downward. Let us see this in the form of an animation. Better to see these things again from right view or from right plane. Clear and hide these things, and we're going to see these things in the form of pressure and temperature from right plane. Any definition? We have to see initially pressure distribution from right plane. Grand check and let us view from right turn here. It will be better to see in the form of an animation. This pressure distribution you can view in the form of Temperature distribution also. Let us see temperature of fluid. Inside the heat pipes, the temperature is in the range of 177 to 344 degrees centigrade. It is indicated by the color of heat pipes. Let us clear and hide next to that one to see surface plots. Insert surface plots. We are going to see temperature of fluid through all faces. Go and check. You can see it is having almost equal temperature at the boundaries. It is in the range of 261 to 344 degrees centigrade. Let us see this from right plane again. Edit definition. And when you see this from right plane. The temperature of fluid at the lower side it is in the range of 596 degrees centigrade. And at the top side it is in the range of 10 to 93 degrees centigrade. Okay, next to that, we want to see the dynamics of flow particles. Surface force clear and hide. We will see dynamics of flow particles from both the exits and through the heat pipes also. So, flow trajectories insert. Instead of 20 numbers, we want to make it more than that. Let us make the numbers to be 80. And instead of pipes, we want to see this dynamic flow flow particles in the form of arrows. Select 
select other is lead number three again from the top side select select other it is lead number four next to that we will select the surfaces of these heat pipes select select other face of lead number five select select other face of lead six next one is lead number eight select select other it is lead number eight by this way you can select all the surfaces of heat pipe so all the surfaces are selected go and check the particle study has been initiated now we can see the dynamics of flow particles through this container we cannot see that much of flow through these heat pipes to see this one in a better way we should have selected dynamics of flow particles from the top side also flow trajectories clear and height next to that we have to see our results in the form of gold plots so gold plots insert i'm going to see all the results for better understanding of results you can see it from excel or we can see from here also let us see the results from here initially we'll see we can see average temperature at cooled air exit is 17.15 degrees centigrade and average temperature at the hot air exit is 493.43 degrees centigrade and again you can have different temperature zones at different areas of our heat pipes at the evaporator we can see the temperature is 243.59 degrees centigrade at the adiabatic zone the temperature is 207.69 degrees centigrade and at the condenser zone that means at the top part you can see the temperature is 171.87 degrees centigrade right so we can see here the main goal that means temperature at the exit location is 17.15 degrees centigrade we can vary this temperature based on the mass flow rate of cold air from this location next to that we will go for some kind of climatic study and we will change the mass flow rate of cold air and see what are the results obtained at the exit location okay next to that we will see all these results in the form of graphs you can see it from here or we can transfer all these results through excel also let us export to excel you can view in the form of graphs first one is average temperature on condenser you can see initially average temperature on the condenser was very less it was in the range of 28 degrees centigrade so after 130 numbers of iterations the final temperature the condenser is 171.87 degrees centigrade for the second case you can see average temperature on the adiabatic zone it will be a little bit more compared to the condenser again you can see after 130 numbers of iterations the final temperature at the adiabatic zone is 27.68 degrees centigrade and at the evaporator zone it will be the maximum one let us see again here also after 130 numbers of iterations the final temperature at the evaporator zone is 243.58 degrees centigrade excluding that we are having some other things also you can see average temperature of fluid and the hot exit location it is little bit less compared to 500 degrees centigrade you can see the temperature is 493.42 degrees centigrade and the hot exit location and the final one that means the temperature at the cold exit location is 17.15 degrees centigrade okay next to that we'll go for some kind of parametric study and see the different temperature at the exit location based on different mass flow rate of cold air okay so we're going for new parametric study we'll start from new parametric study and 
for this biometric study were depending on input variable as the mass flow rate of cooled air. From here, you can select as design of experiments and optimization. And for this parametric study, we will consider the input variable as mass flow rate of cooled air. You can select this from here from the boundary conditions. This inlet mass flow rate of cooled air, we are selecting this one as the input variable. Temperature will remain constant, only we will change the mass flow rate only. The initial mass flow rate is 1. Now, in this case, we will reduce the mass flow rate. Let us change the mass flow rate from 0 0.2 kg per second to 0 0.8 kg per second. I'm going to check. Let us say the output parameters and it is dependent on goals. We are having a lot of goals. Let us select all the goals. Let's check. Now let us see the scenarios. We have five numbers of design experiments. Let us create those experiments. We have already created at a different mass weight of cold air. Let us change this mass flow rate as a correct sequence. First one will select this one as 0.2. Second one will be 0 0.4. Third one will be 0 0.6. Fourth one will make it 0 0.7. And the last one will make 0 0.8. Let us start this parametric study. The solver has already started iterations. You can see from here. Let the iterations move on. It will take some time. You can see from here the temperature zone in the heat pipe. It is also changing. The down part it is actually evaporative section that is high temperature, and as it is moving up, temperatures little bit decreasing in this case the heat pipe is considering as a superconductor that means heat is transferred from the lower section to the upper section at a higher rate let the iterations move on whenever it is finished we'll see the results okay iterations are over we can see all our results with a different mass flow rate of cold air when the mass flow rate of cold air is very less, in that case the temperature of at the exit location of cold air is very high. You can see when the mass flow rate is 0.2 kg per second, in that case the temperature at the exit of cold air is 139.9 degrees centigrade. When the mass flow rate is doubled, it is 0.4 kg per second. Temperature of cold exit has been reduced a little bit and its temperature is 95.97 degrees centigrade. When the mass flow rate is 0.6 kg per second, temperature at the exit location of cold end is 64.61 degrees centigrade. And when the mass flow rate is 0.7 kg per second, the temperature at the exit location of cold end is 60.33 degrees centigrade. And finally, when the mass flow rate is 0.8 kg per second, you can see a huge drop in temperature of the cold end. It is 21.22 degrees centigrade. Now from this data we can have some specific idea that if you want to get the temperature at the exit location to be 25 degrees centigrade in this case our mass flow should be within the range of 0.7 to 0.8 kg per second instead of stopping it here we can go for further optimization and find out the specific value of mass transfer rate from the cold side at which we will get the cold exhaust temperature to be 25 degrees centigrade right this is all about today's video reading one of the applications of a heat pipe where we utilize the exhaust of an engine and converted that exhaust gas to a specific temperature as per our requirement okay thank you so much for watching this video thank you again if you like this video please subscribe and share and if you have any kind of doubts please write to me thank you so much for watching this video thank you again bye